couple top five recruiting classes for Butcher Jones in 2013 and 14, uh, sandwiched in there between uh, two other top 20 classes. So Butch Jones doing the job on the recruiting trail. Tennessee fans are waiting for the big wins to come. That could come, obviously, here in 2016. We bring in Charlie Burris from Fox Sports to help us break down the balls signing class 2016. Charlie, thanks so much for joining us. Well, thanks for inviting me on the show. Yeah, let's talk about those gems. And I know what I have on a, a, a Tennessee guy breaking down the balls. Now, this could be a long, long list. But, uh, you know, in regards to those three or four guys uh, that, that are really getting balls fans amped up. I guess it really starts with Jonathan Kongbo, who was the number one uh, JUCO recruit in America. He is a uh, defensive end. And it was his recruiting or recruitment was very contested. And he chose finally after a whole bunch of shenanigans and nobody really knows what happened except for him. But uh, he chose Tennessee and committed to Tennessee. And he's kind of the, the linchpin, the guy where people said, you know, it kind of took the class from good to great. Past him, it was impressive when they got Tyler Bird, who uh, is – a guy from Miami, uh, or was committed to Miami. He's from Florida and was committed to Miami for a long, long time. And Tennessee got him to flip, and not only him, but uh, another guy that he knew from uh, the who was committed to Miami. He flipped to Tennessee on National Signing Day. Uh, it was all impressive there. And then past that, got Nigel Warrior, who is a safety, and his father played defensive back at Tennessee in the 80s and he was a, a big four-star recruit and should make an immediate impact because that is one of the positions where Tennessee is pretty thin um, at safety. They're, they're really the top guys from National Signing Day. They were the big names and it for all intents and purposes they, they filled the needs, they filled the positions that they needed to it wasn't the top five class that they've had the last two years, but you know, all things considered, it was uh, a success. Yeah, stretching uh, conference lines and uh, going further to uh, become a thorn in Mark Rick's side uh, with those two flips, <laughs> and one was very unexpected, as you mentioned, uh, the corner. Uh, top 15 class, the recruiting rankings mean something. I have that argument from time to time. Individual players are scattered all over the place, and there are outliers constantly but recruiting rankings mean something obviously you look at the national rankings year in year out you look at the, the recruiting rankings they line up uh in, in terms of tennessee's hall you mentioned top 15 versus top five i hope uh, volunteer fans aren't squabbling about that i hope there's no discontent there yes and no there are definitely fans that can take it at what it is because like i said they filled the positions that they needed to uh, and it still looks good for the future. But this team just right now, they don't have a lot of need. They have guys that are going to be here for another couple of years and they're top guys. Um, and so it, if you can look at it in an informed way, <laughs> I think fans won't be disappointed. But sure, there were definitely people who looked at it and said, well, this is not what we've come to expect. Why can't Butch Jones do this year in and year out? He's not Nick Saban. Nobody is Nick Saban except for Nick Saban. And, and that, you know, for anybody that has those unrealistic expectations, I can't speak for them and why they feel that way, but it was, uh, it was good as far as I'm concerned and, and impressive actually on national signing day. It seems like Butch Jones has a real knack for working late in the game and getting these guys right at the very end to see the light <laughs> and, uh, and come to Tennessee. I guess oh, I forgot in listing off the players that I was naming before. I mean, they got the number one dual threat quarterback in America also, Jared Guarantano from uh, New Jersey. That one slipped my mind, but he's been committed to Tennessee for a long, long time. So, uh, but he's all, he might be the biggest cog in that class out of anybody because they'll be looking for a replacement for Josh Dobbs after this year. But, uh, yeah, I, I think it was impressive, but sure, there are fans that weren't exactly pleased that it wasn't a top five class. Yeah, and Charlie, I think you would agree that Butch Jones's effort have to be underlined a little bit more and given a little bit more emphasis and credit based on the state of Tennessee high school football. I believe it's improving based on what I hear 
but for a southern state it's pretty marginal so he's going all over the place to get players he uh, has been very um, very creative in going to a number of states uh, you mentioned New Jersey California has been a big land for him in recent years uh, some of those guys down the list maybe Charlie that you've seen scouting reports on heard good things about maybe seen some tape on that aren't jumping out as uh, the five stars and or even maybe a four star uh, that that uh, you think could be impact players? It's a good question, and it, it's tough to say exactly because the answer is not, you know, something exciting like a running back or just a, a player like that that you're going to see right out in front. But I think they signed a couple of tight ends in Austin Pope and Devontae Brooks. Uh, and Austin Pope is local in Knoxville, and Devontae Brooks from Washington, D.C., and they're both guys that I think could be really good. They're both 6'5", and they're big guys, 220, 230, something like that for each of them. And I think they are flying under the radar in terms of that they really fit. The tight ends are valuable in Tennessee's system. And that, at least with Josh Dobbs, because he lacks an ability to accurately throw far downfield, he's utilized tight ends all the time uh, in Big games, they've come up huge because he, he's had trouble getting the ball to receivers, and I think those guys will be really good replacements for uh, a guy like Ethan Wolf, who has been excellent, um, but I, I want to say he's a senior and, and will be gone after this year. So I think they are guys that you might not have heard about with this class that will make a big impact in my mind. And then, well, this is somebody I didn't bring up, but it was a big commit pretty late in the game, Marquez Callaway. And I think a lot of people know his name, but they don't know exactly how he'll be utilized with Tennessee. And I think if Butch Jones, because he's just an athlete, he's a four-star athlete, and was one of the, I think he's the number two or three athlete in America. If he can be utilized correctly, he's played wide receiver and cornerback, if I'm not wrong, I, I think he'll be huge. Hey, Charlie, uh, this fan base has to be ready to explode like no other in college football. No other that I can think of because they're rabid, the expectations are high, they haven't played a, a truly meaningful game for a championship appearance since like 07. And all, as you just indicated, all indicators are in the right direction. And the losses were excruciating. It's there, you can pick out a handful of teams across the country that lost a bunch of one-score games, but excruciating losses against really good competition uh, for Tennessee last year. So <laughs> I got to think that uh, 2016 is going to be at a fever pitch in regards to anticipation. It's already crazy. The hype is just at an all-time high that, that I've seen. I think the, the most hype since probably 2006. Tennessee, I believe that year was preseason number two. They ended up going five and seven. Uh, so Tennessee fans are a little skittish as far as that goes because the hype has blown up in Tennessee's face in the past, in the very recent past. But it's exactly like you said. These losses hurt really, really bad, and Tennessee, you, Tennessee fans could see that they're just right there knocking on the door. They should have beaten Florida. They should have beaten Oklahoma. They had both of those teams – just completely down on the ropes and blew it right at the end. I think Butch Jones took those losses and learned. It seemed like at the end of the season, he he had much more of a mentality of like stepping on his opponent's neck rather than sitting and letting them try to come back after Tennessee got a big lead. It that's That's what fans want to see and probably what they're scared that they're not going to see is that Tennessee has had trouble putting these big teams away. And it's all very early in the season. It's going to come down to that Florida game. That's Tennessee hasn't beaten them in 11 years now. Had them beat last year. I think if you can get through that game and beat Florida, get that monkey off your back, the 11-year losing streak off your back, fans will lighten up a lot more <laughs> because that is, that is what has been hanging over this team's head for so long. It's what kept them out of the SEC championship this year. And – that's going to be so huge in, in every way. And so get past that Florida game and that and the hype for this team after that will just be crazy um, because at that point, I think you're looking at not only is Tennessee going to win the SEC East, 
but they could very realistically get in the playoff at that point. And so it, it, the fan base will be tough to manage. <laughs> I'll say they're already crazy and they'll tell you about it, but it's, it all comes down to that in my mind, whether this Tennessee team can make the, the real leap into being an elite squad. Yeah, none of us can wait to see college football again. It's going to be quite some time, but Tennessee would have to be those one of those teams that is very intriguing in regards to the plot and, and the buildup and it being such a long time for a traditional power uh, to be in the mix nationally. Uh, Charlie Burris uh, from Fox Sports joining us uh, right here on Mark Rogers TV to break down Tennessee. Appreciate the time, Charlie. Absolutely. Thank you.